What's up, it's Jackie Two here, and for today's video, welcome back to another Smash Discussion video topic, where this time, we're gonna be talking about and discussing things that happened after the Kaza Presents Showcase, shown off by Masio Sakurai. There was a lot of things that happened at the time, it has been like a week, almost a week, since Kazuya came out, and I'm not gonna lie, the character itself is pretty fun to play as, but also terrifyingly busted, in my opinion, and for what I've seen from other videos, Kazuya is pretty raging online in Smash competitively, or something like that like that. I don't know much about Smash competitives, but all I can say is that we're going to be d discussing things that happen and even talk about the things that sh that were shown up in the Kaza showcase. And since it has been a week, my opinions have kind of changed a bit. And the reason I didn't make this video since I've done this before with Pyra and the, like the past Fire's Pass Volume 2 characters, I've only wanted to give myself a week to talk about my thoughts and opinions about the showcase itself. And I want to get my mind straight after I play a few matches of the character itself and so with that let's just not waste time but let's get started with the entire discussion discussion video starting off with the most obvious thing since i want to get this out of the way and that one of the main highlights of the showcase was the me costume reveals. This me costume reveal was the, I guess, the reveal of hopes and dreams because four characters, technically three, because to really be honest with you, I've only seen a few discussion videos about the character Dragonborn or Dovahkiin from Skyrim, whatever you want to call the character, from the series Skyrim, and I have only can tell that he's just like, in my opinion, at least five to ten percent, had a, like a ten, five to ten percent chance of being the Smash Brothers. It is cool to see Skyrim coming to Smash Brothers, and I'm glad Best Desta is getting more reps. And now that I think about it, I'm not entirely sure if we had any characters that represents Best Desta as a playable fighter. I mean, we have Vault Boy as a me costume, but I'm not sure if I, I'm not sure if that technically counts, but Dragon Board is pretty something. Next, it was Lloyd from Tales of Series. Now, despite everyone, I think most of us knew that this character was going to come back as a me costume, since he was the only returning me costume, like the the only me costume at the time that didn't return from Smash 4, but now it's revealed to come back in Ultimate. The thing is, though, there were still some Lloyd fans who still wanted this character as a playable fighter, and it was sad to see it. I'm just glad that Tails Up is back to represent Smash, but it's more. I mean, we all expected Lloyd to come back after Kazuya's presentation. I'm just it just, it just took long enough for Baron Knight and Amco to get a second rep after Pac-Man. Then we got Dante. I'm not going to talk about Dante since I think we know how well that went. And then there's Shantae. Now, Shantae was also requested as a playable fighter. Heck, one of the most well-requested indie characters out there. And since Min Min first broke the spear roll, since the whole spear roll was kind of a dumb thing to begin with, ever since their announcement of Spirits and after Ultimate's release, it was great to see that both Min Min and Pyramidra both like you know broke the whole spirit roll thing but it was still sad to see Shantae you know breaking you know Shantae you know just breaking a lot of fans hopes and dreams of the character becoming an actual playable fighter though the good thing about this character and his costume is that she comes with an exclusive uh, music track so and don't worry it's like 75 cents for each costume so you don't have to worry about you know high pricing between each costumes I am glad I mean it is it has been a while since we've gotten a any sort of brand new exclusive music for the me costume, so that's pretty great for myself. But anyways, the whole me costume thing, that was the main highlight of it, and it was a huge, huge bummer for the fans who wanted these characters, especially Dante. It still hurts, but I'm glad that Nintendo also acknowledges the me, but let's move on. Now, I've talked about the Mii costumes a lot, so now let's just talk about what happened in the Kazuya Presents. Now, the moveset itself. When I first saw the moveset, I thought it was going to be complicated, just like, you know, Terry, Ryu, and Ken. But then I, but then when he came out, I realized he really wasn't that hard than I expected. Though I do see a lot of, you know, online videos talking about this character's, you know, re, you know, like, actual rage and all. Like, there was a lot of rage I've seen from a few videos and all, and I'm not going to lie, I'm not sure if Kazuya 
Garcia is pretty... All I can say is that he's simple, but very busted as well, in my opinion. Because, from what I can tell... From, from what I can tell, if you guys saw my live stream last Tuesday, then you would have known that I managed to defeat a lot of opponents and, you know, fighters by just using two punches. And I can't tell whether that's terrifyingly busted or that's just something else. After all, he is the Iron Fist of Darkness. That's pretty much his whole you know, nickname and all, but it is still really, really terrifying to play this character, though it is hard to do the command inputs, I think the command inputs were the hardest part, since he has, like, a lot more than Terry than I expected, I mean, Ryu and Ken and Terry, they're all, they all have, like, you know, at least some simple command inputs, Kazuya has at least a few, like, like, six or seven. I really did not count, because there was a lot of things I had to process during the presentation. I mean, the characters, moveset, and all, it was somewhat complicated. That's all I can say about it. And now I think about it, the stage, Mishima Dojo. It is a pretty small-looking stage when it comes to blast zones and all, and I love Heiachi making a cameo in there. And also, another cameo was the inscriptions on the floor. In the Kazuya present, Sakurai showed up what's, like, you know, some weird inscription writing in the floor, and for those who played the Tekken series for the longest time, you might understand the Tekken lore, and from what I've heard, the Tekken lore, the Tekken lore is really not that easy to, you know, comprehend or even talk about, because it's really complicated to really, you know, discuss things regarding about it, from, but from what I heard, it has something to do with between, I guess, the love symbol of both Heiachi and Kazumi, who is the mother of Kazuya and all, and, you know, that is pretty cool, and now that I think about it, speaking of Heiachi... The character was once again considered for ultimate. He was considered once again back in Smash 4 and that was like 7 like 7 years ago and all and now that I think about it like the character Heiachi. I mean Everyone, a lot, I mean, everyone expected a Tekken rep, whether it's Heiachi or Jin Kazuma. Some people wanted Yoshimitsu or other characters, but Heiachi seemed to be like one of the most requested ones out there. Even, even like, you know, some thinking him as the mascot of Tekken, when in reality it isn't. And now that I think about it, when I made the video talking about the character that was considered before Kazuya's inclusion, the character Heiachi, what I didn't mention in there is that what I, before, like Sakurai explained of why Kazuya was considered before Heiachi, was the fact that I honestly thought it has something to do with the fact that obviously Kazuya was the main character, even though, well, used to be because he's now the villain, and now that I think about it, there was also, like, I guess, the actor of Heiachi. If you guys don't know, sadly, back in August of 2018, Heiachi's voice actor has sadly passed away, and this was before Ultimate's release, and it really heartbroken the entire Tekken community, because he's pretty much been voicing Heiachi for the longest time, and I think that was kind of one of the reasons, but for, but for what Sagre says, it was something to do with the fact of Kazuya's Delva Gene, since he did inherit it from Kazumi, and then after that, Jin inherited uh, the whole devil gene and all. So I guess that's the reason why. And now that I think about it, when I'm not entirely sure how they can make Heiachi's move set into Smash Ultimate. Because keep in mind, they were considered they were considering a Tekka rep since Bandai Namco was developing Smash 4 at the time. But it has something to do with the fact of how they had to in, like you know develop and implement the Tekken move set into a 2D Smash Brothers game because. Tekken is a 3D final game, and it's pretty much hard to do it. And now that I think of... And, and okay, I, I keep saying that. I, I deeply apologize, but... Really, I think that's... I mean, I forgot to mention the fact that um, Heiachi's voice actor has sadly passed away, but really, there's there's just a lot of things to comprehend regarding about it, and I, now that I think about it, I'm actually glad that Kazuya was the fighter instead of Heiachi. I mean, I would have preferred Jin, in my opinion, but the fact that Tekken finally gets itself a rep after all, all this time, it is about time, since, I mean, it's Street Fighter and Fatal Fury can have representation, so can Tekken, since it's one of the best, earliest 3D fighting games out there, and I really am glad Sakurai is now staying to the source material. And speaking of that, in the presentation, Sakurai has once again reaffirmed that the second Fighters Pass with its next DLC character, Challenger Pack 11, would be its last. That means after the character is officially released, that means Ultimate is officially finalized and done. And I'm not entirely sure when the character releases. In my one of my predictions, in one of my videos, I did say and predicted that maybe the character that Challenger Pack 11 might come out in like maybe somewhere between November and December, since the second Fighters Pass would be out before the end of 2021. So. 
we'll just have to make sure and see what they have in store for us in the future and really i want to see how nintendo pretty much choose their character like i want to see how they end up ultimate since i mean violet Pretty much, uh, no, I, I have nothing against Violet. It was just the fact that Violet ended off the first fight's, fight's pass, which is kind of underwhelming. But that's just my opinions and all. And so with that, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below of what you all think of what happened in the Kazuya Presents. I was, make, I was supposed to make this last week, but I, I had to, like, you know, make sure my thoughts and opinions are well thought out. And that's all I want to say about it. And so with that, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bell for more videos and follow my Twitter. And I'll see you guys next time. And remember this, once a legend, always a legend. Like a hell cut.